Well, after some interesting action in free agency, things in the Central Division are shaping up and we are looking ahead to next season. On today's Locked on Predators episode, we are taking a closer look at the Central Division netminders. I'm joined by good friend and goalie guru Jay Foster from Locked on Blue Jackets, and we're going to talk about who we see as the top netminders in the Central Division Who are the Predators going to have some trouble facing this season? All that's coming up on the Lockdown Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked on Predators your first listen of the day. I am Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer at onthefourcheck.com, and I am usually joined by my partner in crime, Nick Morgan. Nick is off on a vacation adventure this week, so I'm flying solo. But today we do have a special guest joining me. We are talking goaltenders. There's been a little bit of movement in the netminder situation in the Central Division. So we're going to kind of take a peek ahead. Who do we think is going to be in net for the Central Division teams? And what netminders are going to give the Nashville Predators the most trouble when they are in division play? We're going to talk about that today with Jay Foster. Jay is the host of Locked on Blue Jackets. You may have heard that the Columbus Blue Jackets had some stuff go on in their offseason. We're going to talk about that real quick with Jay before we begin. And then we're going to dive into Central Division Goalie Talk. So, Jay, first of all, thank you for taking time to switch conferences. I know, like, the Western is not, we're not your people, but I appreciate you taking time to kind of come on over to the Western Conference Central Division to talk with us. But before we dive into Central Division goalies, we, I just want to check in with you, you know, as the host of Locked On Blue Jackets. I'm just curious. Anything exciting going on in Columbus this offseason? Um, I mean, there's a couple of things, I guess, like nothing too out there. Um, you know, we only went and signed the biggest free agent of the off season, just like out of the blue, um, which yeah. is, I've told this a couple of times on my show, but it's extremely funny. So I had basically gotten really mad about the free agency day because we signed Erica Branson for $4 million, which is. That's something it, we could talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I'm mad. Yamo, what are you doing? What are you doing to me? Um, finished up all my free agency cover, uh, free agency coverage, and then went to bed because it was like 11 p.m. And I'm just like in bed, you know, messing around on my phone, scrolling through social media, and I get a text in the group chat that's like just my name in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got a text from uh, Sean, our channel coordinator. Uh, to be like, I really hope you're awake right now. And I'm like, oh God, what's what's happening? What's happened? Have they traded everyone? Like, have they traded line A? Is that what's happening? And then they were like, no, you got Johnny Goodrow. And I was like, well, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> because... Roughly translated, I'm sure. Roughly translated. And yeah, it was it's been a it's been a fun, it's been a fun couple of weeks to be a Blue Jackets yeah. fan. Big, big draft, two first round picks. Super yep. excited about both of those guys. David Juracek could play in the NHL in October. Like, that's what I'm predicting. Mm-hmm. I picked him sixth overall. And then getting Johnny Gaudreau. Uh, we re signed Patrick Line to a long term deal. Well, four years, which I, is, I always say long term. And then I'm like, it's half the max, but that's, it's fine. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I have to say goodbye to Oliver Bjorkstrand, one of our longest tenured Blue Jackets, who I loved very much to make room for Patrick Line. But uh, yeah, it's been, it's been an off season. I was just talking yeah. to JD Young, host of Locks on Sharks, about like, we were like, man, it's really tough to fit an entire off season worth of content into three weeks because the draft yeah. was like, July 6th, and then two weeks later, Gaudreau happened, and then a week later, Lion A happened, Bjorkstrand happened within about two hours of each other, and I was like, man, they couldn't have spread this out a little bit to give me, like, a little bit more, so I didn't have to That's right. do everything in this three weeks, but no, it uh, it's it's been fun. After yeah. after a pretty boring off-season last season, 
it's been uh, it's kind of exciting to be making splashes in the free agency market because Yama doesn't normally do that. Mm-hmm. He's very I like to draft, I like to develop talent from within. Oh, here's Johnny Gaudreau. We'll just <laughs> offer him almost ten million dollars for the next seven years, and I'm like, you know what? I'm about it. Let's do yeah. this. So pretty surprised you didn't. This was not a move that you feel like people in Columbus anticipated them making. Not even a little bit. There was yeah. like whispers and I was like man it sure would be I'd like I was joking with my friends I was like man it'd be fun if we went out to get Nazem Kadri who's probably yes. the other a big ticket agent because Blue yes. Jackets needed a center um and then I think it was about like 4 p.m eastern people were like apparently Columbus is in the running and I was like no nah <laughs> I don't, I don't believe it. This is this is Yamo like throwing smoke. This is, you know, mm-hmm. but he's probably called to do his due diligence uh, because why wouldn't you on Johnny Gaudreau? And then, you know, I was like, I hate it, but he's probably going to go to New Jersey and mm-hmm. make my life yeah. for the next seven years. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, they were like, no, we wanted to come to Columbus. He was going to go to, that's the thing. He was, apparently he was quite far along in negotiations with New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, oh, Columbus is interested. I want to go there make that happen wow. to his agent and then yes. his agent made it happen. And obviously um, there was a really funny, like um, the Blue Jacket Social does a really good job with these like behind the scenes clips and stuff. They call it behind the battle. They do an episode, I think every month and it's just, mm-hmm. you know, fun behind the scenes stuff. Um, and they did a little clip on Twitter that was like um, footage of when they got Goudreau. Oh uh, my God. <laughs> so like, <laughs> It's just extremely funny that they were like, well, uh, if ownership gives us the okay, we're going to sign Johnny Gaudreau. Um, And then just before that, Rick Nash, who works with the player development department at the minute, kind Mm -hmm. of snuck into the room and he's being like dead cagey and he like glances over at the camera and he's like, so I'll be talking to uh, Dorse, who is uh, Derek Dorset, who had been talking to Erica Branson. Apparently, Mm -hmm. Branson was like, hey, my friend on the team wants to come to Columbus. And you could just see like, he was kind of looking at the camera, like, how much can I give away when the camera's here? And then it kind of flipped, and they were like, yeah, Johnny Gaudreau is interested in coming to Columbus. Which is extremely, extremely funny, extremely surreal. Um, next season's going to be so much fun. I'm so excited. Oh, for my gosh. Season. Like, Gaudreau and Line yeah. A, put, put a stick man in between them. Put a cardboard cutout in between those two guys and just watch them go. Like, it's yeah. going to be so much fun. Yes. And you know what? I really will say that the Blue Jackets, you all deserve to have some fun. We were a little disappointed. Nick and I were a little bit disappointed because when you all signed uh, Goudreau, we were like, maybe Patrick Line is not affordable anymore. (laughs) And we were kind of making some googly eyes at him, but you took care of that. So it's going to be a really fun season for you all in Columbus, especially with that Eric Goodbranson signing. Like, nailed it. (laughs) That's going to be great. (laughs) But anyway, so we are going to talk goalies. I'm going to pull you away from the Columbus Blue Jackets for a little bit. And we are going to talk Central Division goalies. Jay is, of course, the goalie go-to for the Locked On NHL Network. And so I have roped Jay into a whole discussion about who are, in fact, the top three goaltenders in the Central Division. So we're going to dive into that in just a second. But, of course, first, want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by our great Great friends at betonline.net. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. You can find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. You can find reviews. You can find news from every single league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, of course, NHL. They have combat sports. They have esports. They even have golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting scores and podcasts they have you covered with it all head to bet online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today bet online where the game starts all right jay central division goalies there's been some movement there's been some turnover there's been some action when it comes to netminders in the central division but we really want to talk about who do you think are the top three goaltenders in the Central Division? And if you want to just go ahead and start with UC Saros, I won't judge. 
<laughs> I mean, use these arrows is definitely up there. Um, this morning I was kind of prepping for this, and so I made a list of who I'm pretty sure are going to be the starters in the yes. uh, in the central division. So uh, just for for listeners, the names that we're working with on on my side anyway, uh, UC Cyrus mm-hmm. for the Predators, Mark Andre Fleury for the Minnesota Wild, uh, Peter Mrazek for the Chicago Blackhawks, which I had completely forgotten about until I looked at the Blackhawks roster <laughs> this morning. Bless. Uh, oh, Gordon bless. Bennington in St. Louis, Connor Hellebuck in Winnipeg, uh, Alexander Georgiev in Colorado, uh, Jake Ottinger in Dallas, and whoever the heck Arizona is going to have as their goalie, because I looked and was like, I guess... I guess it's Vimelka, but who knows? I know. Who knows? As I, I was didn't looking, recognize the other name. Yeah. So <laughs> it's that cardboard um, cutout that's playing between Line A and Goudreau. He's also subbing. He's in also Arizona the goalie for the Arizona Coyotes. Yes. Yeah. Bless, it's, so. Man, it's rough in Arizona. But um, <laughs> so the the names that we're working with, like that's that is seven quite good goalies. Like the yes. goalies in the Central Division are good. Um, but, yeah. You know, I mean, like your, your opinion may vary on a guy like Peter Mrazek, who I quite like as a goalie. Yeah. I think he got a bad, uh, I think he got the short end of the stick in Toronto. Uh, obviously, he played on a very bad Detroit team before that, you know. Right. Um, he's going to be playing on a very bad Chicago team this season. So that might not, you know, be the career uh, resurgence that he's looking for. Um, I don't really rate Jordan Bennington. All mm-hmm. that much. Um, I think he's he's fine. He's a perfectly mm-hmm. acceptable goalie, but the fact that they kept him and let Vili Husso go is a choice, honestly. Um, I I was thinking about that as I was prepping for this too. I thought that that's a move that maybe I would have thought about for a second more. Because Vili Husso, I think, really has something there. Like, you know, Bennington, okay, he throws water bottles and gets you know he has big feelings um but yeah i thought okay st louis all right that's a choice yeah I it was it. i don't know that it was the right choice but it was a right choice that they made um i know the locked on blues uh guys are really big on bennington and like that's that's their opinion they're allowed to be i personally don't really rate him all that much in terms of goaltending in uh in the division but like those two guys aside and arizona like uc saros mark andre flurry connor hellebuck uh georgiev and jake ottinger that is mm-hmm. five very very good goalies right mm-hmm. there like um georgiev i have been a big fan of for a long yeah. time uh he was i assumed the successor to henrik lundquist until obviously igor shesterkin came out of nowhere and yes. decided to be the best goalie in the world um <laughs> Conor Hellebuck, I think, is one of the best goalies in the league, who, again, mm-hmm. has been suffering behind a truly terrible Winnipeg Jets team. Um, Marc-Andre Fleury, one of the one of the best to do it, yes. honestly. Yes. Um, just phenomenal, phenomenal goalie. Um, UC Saros, we love UC Saros on this we podcast. We love UC Saros. <laughs> we do. We do. We do. Yeah, he's he's great. We love UC Saros. And then Jake Ottinger is maybe one of the most exciting young goalies in the game. You know, yeah. like you look at his body of work in the playoffs. Um, and I was looking at goalie stats and uh, Micah Blake McCurdy at Ineffective Math on Twitter does a bunch of like, uh, he's got like charts and stuff for goalies. Um, and he looked and apparently Jake Ottinger faced almost the same amount of shots as Igor Shosturkin did. Wow. Igor Shosturkin played three rounds. Yes. Jake Ottinger played, played six games. Yes. <laughs> and and they were, and, and really wouldn't have been six games had Jake Ottinger not played no. the way he was, that he, he did. He was the did. best player by, yes. by a country mile. Yes. So he's someone that I'm really excited for, um, to see him continue to develop. Uh, I wish he wasn't on Dallas, but we don't all get what we want. So <laughs> we can we can totally agree on that. <laughs> we can. So yeah, let's talk for just a second about Jake Ottinger. So young goalie, 23 years old, uh, 46, 30, and 15 last season. This was a goaltender that really for me, who, you know, I kind of look at big picture. I don't focus as much on goaltending as somebody like you does. This was a surprise to me. Huge, like we just talked about, huge in the postseason for Dallas in that game seven against Calgary had, what was it, like 64 saves, like a franchise record number of saves in that game. 
single-handedly kept Dallas going in this series. And I'm curious, as you kind of look ahead, you know, we just found out recently that Dallas lost John Klingberg. He's going to the Ducks. How how do you see Jake Ottinger's season going next season when, you, when you've kind of got an adjustment in the defense in front of you? How do you think that's going to go for Jake Ottinger? I mean, it's really tough to say because so mm-hmm. much of goaltending is kind of wrapped up in defense. Um, mm-hmm. And I actually had a similar-ish conversation around the draft and why there was no kind of highly ranked goaltending prospects. Mm-hmm. I was talking to uh, Will Scouch of Scouching about this. And he was like, and so I said, you know, how do you measure goalies? And he was like, well, at its at its most base form, do they stop pucks at whatever level they're playing at? Mm-hmm. And if you look at Jake Ottinger, he had a 913 with the Texas Stars this season, a 914 with the Dallas Stars. He had a 911 last season, a 917 the season before that. Uh his last year at Boston University had a 926. You know, mm. he he has been stopping pucks all the way back to and i mean even if you look at like the like real junior hockey where it's so hard for goalies to perform well right. he had a 934 at the under 17s usa he had a 934 at the under 18s usa like he he's been stopping pucks basically his entire career and i don't think that's going to change mm-hmm. you know sometimes a goalie is just good and i think it's it's tough sometimes to figure out which goalies are good and which goalies play on a good team Yes. Um, you know, and I think we talked a little bit about this when we talked about the Vesna candidates. You know, mm-hmm. Igor Shesterkin is a very good goalie. Mm-hmm. And I think that tricks a lot of people into thinking that the Rangers are a better team than they are. Right. I think Ottinger is kind of in that same boat of, I think, he's a very good goalie playing on a very average Dallas Stars team that is, that, okay, has some kind of bright bright spots. Uh, obviously, Mira Heskinen. Uh, right. big fan of Rupe Hints, but like their core players, their big stars are getting older, you know, mm-hmm. like Jamie Benton yes. is what, 32, 33 by now, probably. Yeah, that's hockey yeah. old. That's not real people old, but right. that is yeah. hockey old. <laughs> Careful there. <laughs> it's fine. I was talking about Oliver Bjorkstrand as an aged, as an aging veteran the other day and then realized he was three years younger than me. So it's fine. Oh, but... Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the, th- the thing about Ostriger is he'll be He'll be fine next season, mm-hmm. I think. Um, and this is what his this was his first full season as kind of the de facto starter. Right. And I think next season he's gonna get even more work with, you know, the loss of Braden Holtby, mm-hmm. um, the loss of Ben Bishop. Both of those guys are either retired or retiring. Um, I don't know off the top of my head who's gonna be backing up Ottinger. I assume Kudobin. Um, mm-hmm. Anton Dobin, but it's it's really it's his net to lose. So I'm expecting right. a a big big year for Jake Ottinger, which is exciting uh, because yes. I love good young goaltenders. Um, he was a big part of that Boston University team in 2018 uh, when they basically murdered every other team on the ice. You know, they were like the the University of Michigan of 2018. That was a very yes. very good BU team. Um, and so ever since then, I've been like, you know what? I like Ottinger. He yes. seems like a good kid, very good goalie. I'm excited to see where his career goes. Yeah, I think he's going to be very fun to watch this season. Great. I think he's great in chaos. And when you are the Dallas Stars, there is inevit- inevitably going to be some chaos right now. Like you said, they're kind of in a weird place, the Stars are. So I think Ottinger's going to be one of those players who is going to affect the trajectory of that team next season where, you know, you can have a really great goaltender, like you were talking about Igor Shosturkin, you can have a great goaltender who makes the team better, or you can have a really great goaltender who just, no matter how hard they try, can't pull a team forward with them. It'll be interesting to see how Ottinger's play affects Dallas coming up this season. Who is another goaltender in the central that you think is, is top out of, a, a pretty good crop of central goaltenders. Yeah. So if we take, I mean, if we take the the kind of the five that that I talked about, I think mm-hmm. Ottinger is definitely one of my top three. Um, yes. I think another one of my top three is uh, Connor Hellebuck. Yes. I he had a rough he had a rough go of things this season. I think most mm-hmm. because the Winnipeg Jets were just 
actively it, it dying was on the ice. Um, there was, I don't know what's wrong in that team, in that locker room, in that system, but something's, something's not right with the Jets. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think Hellebuck really suffered. Considering his season before that, he was, in my mind, the best goalie in the league, bar none, you know, yes. better than Andre Vasilevsky, who most people are considering, you know, the best goalie in the league. I personally think Connor Hellbuck is is a better goalie than mm-hmm. Vasilevsky. I don't know if that's a hot take. People can come at me if if they disagree. I don't care. <laughs> that, that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. Um, and again, another case of a phenomenal goalie mm-hmm. playing on a bad team. And yes. he did the... Um, I always call it the Jonathan Quick method um, because in 2012, the Kings kind of stumbled into the playoffs and then Jonathan Quick was like, right, well, we're here. We're winning a cup and dragged the entire team to winning a cup, basically. And Connor Hellebuck very nearly did that a couple of seasons ago. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's sometimes a goal. And again, Igor Shosturkin, sometimes a goalie can just drag a team to the playoffs through sheer force of will. And That's I think right. Con Hellbuck is one of those. He's still quite young uh, in terms of uh, goaltending. Let me just pull up to make sure I'm not lying about that. Um, <laughs> he's, well, he's getting, he's on the, he's probably on a downward slope of his mm-hmm. career. He's 29. So again, still oh, gosh. very young by like people ages. Right. <laughs> in human years, he's in human young. years. He's fine. In, in hockey years. In hockey years. He's basically got one foot in the grave. No, he's, <laughs> he's probably on like a downward slope of right. his career. But I think depending on how the Jets do this season, mm-hmm. I, I am expecting a big bounce back from yeah. Connor Hellebuck. Um, yeah. Again, a good, American goalie like Jake Jake Ottinger playing on a bad team, but stopping pucks anyway. Um, yes. Let me pull up his career stats. His workload oh. last season was very uh, interesting, Unreal. very comparable to UC Saros. They both, I think um, Hellebuck played 66 games. I think Saros maybe played one more or one less than Hellebuck. So his workload last season was significant um had four shutouts was 29 27 in 0 9 10 save percentage so despite being on a team like you said that really struggled connor hellebuck had a consistently good season and i think this is one of those things where with hellebuck you don't have you just can never assume he's going to have a down year he is at worst going to be reliable at best he's going to make you cry You know, that's just, I mean, that's just his skill level. He is consistently good. Um, And and it's interesting, you know, as a Nashville Predators, uh, somebody who covers them, it was interesting to see the Jets went out and they picked up David Riddick, who the Predators had last season. David Riddick saw very little action for the Nashville Predators. Again, we talked about Saros just had this, you know, huge workload like Hellebuck did. And I and I think that's probably going to be the same thing. I think we're going to see another huge workload for Hellebuck because, you know, we love, first of all, we love David Riddick as a person. Dude's hilarious, lovely, delightful guy. Just not necessarily the backup goaltender that the Nashville Predators needed. And I I don't know that he's going to come in and take that workload, uh, take some of that heaviness off of Hellebuck. So I imagine we're going to see him in net just as much this coming season as we did last season. And and again, he's probably going to do fine. Yeah. I mean, like you look at, again, it's like, does he stop pucks? Yes. Right. This was a bad season for him. Mm-hmm. And he still had a nine ten save percentage. You know, Can, the last yes. time he had a sub nine hundred save percentage was in two thousand and ten, two thousand and eleven, when he was playing high school hockey in Michigan. <laughs> so yeah, you know, so consistently good. Like his bad year is a consistently good year. Yeah, and he's a, he's a guy that if he, if he's only average, then the Winnipeg Jets might struggle. Mm-hmm. If he's good then the Winnipeg Jets could find their way back to the playoffs. Um, it could be, we don't necessarily have to get into it, but I think playoffs could be pretty interesting in terms of the central division, because mm-hmm. looking at teams, I think some teams have taken huge steps forward. Some teams have taken huge steps back. Some teams have kind of stuck where right. they are, but there's going to be, I don't know, it's going to be uh, interesting, especially because the Pacific is so bad. Yes. You could very well see five playoff teams from 
the central mm-hmm. division again yeah. and i wouldn't be surprised if the winnipeg jets were one of those teams and again it's if you make it into the playoffs you have a chance of winning the stanley cup mm-hmm. you know you just have to be one of those six timing teams. is everything timing Sometimes is it only everything. gets hot yes it in is. the playoffs last season he had a 931 save percentage in eight games you know mm-hmm. it's yeah. It's not, it yeah. Him. He's not the problem in Winnipeg. <laughs> he is not the problem. That is very true. So, in just a second, we are going to get from Jay the number one goaltender or top goaltender in the Central Division. And I think Jay knows exactly the name that he is supposed to say. But before we get into that, if you're looking for more hockey talk after this episode, make your second listen of the day locked on NHL. This is locked on experts across the league, giving you a daily 30 minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. You can stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked on NHL. They are your daily 30 minute NHL podcast. All right, Jay. Now, I don't want to pressure you in any way. I don't want you to feel cornered. But let's talk about who you see as probably one of the top goaltenders in the Central Division. There is a right and wrong answer. (laughs) Okay. I will say, just to kind of curb anything here, this is not my one, two, three ranking. So this is, I don't know that I have a one, two, three ranking. This is just the three best. Right. Um, if you pushed me, I could probably do a one, two, three, but I think it's probably best for my reputation on this show if I don't <laughs> uh, do that. But let's talk. Let's talk about UC Cyrus because, okay. as previously mentioned, we love UC Cyrus on this show. Um, one of my absolute favorite goalies to watch, as someone who is a goalie themselves, who is mm-hmm. five foot ten and has to deal with everyone else being very, very tall. Yeah, uh, I love. A short goalie and Yusitaras is one of the best guys doing it out there. Um, mm-hmm. He's just, like I say, he's just so much fun. Yes, he's he a is. a complete nightmare to play against. Um, every time we play the Preds, which is not very much, uh, you know, twice a season, I'm like, mm-hmm. man, I hope they have the backup because I don't know how good our chances <laughs> are going to be against Saros. And, yeah. you know, we've we've talked about this before as well, like how how lucky New York was to go from Henrik Lundqvist, one of the best to ever Mm -hmm. do it, to Igor Shosturkin, who's been phenomenal. And Nashville did exactly the same thing. You know, I was a huge, huge Pecorino fan. And he went from Pecorino immediately to his Mm -hmm. successor, UC Syros, without even a stumble, really. He he backed up for a couple of years and then took over the, the starter role, I think, uh, Rene's last season, they kind of did a tandem where Saros ended up taking a little bit more work. Right. And now he's like, yeah, I'm the starter now. What of it? And mm-hmm. he's clearly capable because, as previously mentioned, he played a bajillion games last season and will probably yes. continue to do so this season. So, Yes. And that's one of the interesting things about UC Saros because people did talk a lot about his workload last season. And it was something that we really kept our eye on as well. And then at the very end of the season, he was injured. He had an ankle injury in the Calgary game. And one of the things people said is it's this workload, it's this workload. But if you watch UC Saros, one of the interesting things about him is that he flourishes with consistency. And as much as you talk about, gosh, you've got to bring in and you know, you've got to bring in a backup to lighten his workload. And the Predators did. They brought in Kevin Lincoln in from the Blackhawks. So, you know, we kind of anticipated it was going to be Connor Ingram coming up from Milwaukee. But now they brought in Kevin Lincoln in and we're just waiting to see how that all sifts out because we have goalies out the yin yang now in Nashville. But, you know, UC Saros is great with consistent play. And, you know, I think probably there will be a little bit of maybe more games than what he played. I don't know that he'll necessarily play 67 games this coming season, but he is, this is not going to be a split net for the Nashville Predators because UC Saros flourishes with consistent play. And like you said, his transition into becoming the starter really was without many bumps along the way. And, and those of us who have known how good he was, those of us who have seen him backing up Pecorino for years, I think even then we still were like, okay, there's going to be this adjustment period. Period. And there has been no adjustment period for um, for UC Saros. He's just hopped into the starting job and, and taken over. He was third in Vesna voting last season. Let's just give a hurrah for that. So I think he's, you know, and of course I am, you know, locked on Predators host. So, but I think he is definitely going to be one of the top goaltenders to watch in the Central Division this season. Do you agree? 
Yeah, hundred percent. He's yeah. one of the goalies I think should be watched mm-hmm. league wide. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. know necessarily that he'll be a top three goalie, right. uh, depending on how how some things shake out. But yeah, he's definitely like I said, he's a guy that I always worry about when mm-hmm. my team has to face him. Um, I will say Kevin Lankinen, I like a lot. Again, okay. we played a very bad, played on a very bad Blackhawks team, just an absolutely brutal team, and. Did I mean I don't know what his stats were off the top of my head, but I remember watching him in games and being like, "Oh, this kid has something," mm-hmm. you know. So there's something there, and again, I think putting him on a slightly better team, yeah, uh, or a much better team, depending on how how you view the Blackhawks <laughs> versus the Reds, probably probably a significantly better team. I think that's an upgrade. Um, yeah. I don't see him like you said. I don't see him taking the net from Cyrus, but if mm-hmm. he can play, you know, if he can play thirty games mm-hmm. this season. Yeah, that, that would be gives a huge sorrows. Just a little bit more, mm-hmm. a little bit more um, insurance, and he doesn't have to play literally sixty-seven. Uh, games. Yes, um, yes. So, what are the things about UC Soros's game that you think make him one of the best goaltenders in the Central? What are the things that stand out to you about his game or his play? Oh man, I think the the first one for me is the he plays like he's six inches taller than he actually is. You know, yes. you get some guys that I feel like play like they're a little bit smaller. You see, especially really tall goalies, you know, mm-hmm. the guys that are like six, 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 seven. You saw it with um, Ben Bishop a lot in Dallas. Mm-hmm. He plays like he's smaller. Um, mm-hmm. UC Saris plays like he's seven feet tall. And the net is never like, he's, he's always so positionally sound, mm-hmm. which I think again, comes from being a smaller goalie. And, uh, you know, speaking from experience, you, when your limbs aren't as long as the other goalie, then you have to make sure you're in the, the perfect position to begin with, because right. you can't move as fast. You can't get there as fast. You can't throw a hand out and cut and, you know, completely cover, cover the net. You know, right. like when I'm in butterfly, I, um, my legs don't cover the bottom of the net, you know? And that's that's kind of where I'm at. So you, know, you get some goalies that like yeah, they put one leg down and they've covered the entire bottom of the net, you know, so they don't have to worry about that. Saros, because he's a smaller guy, has to be so positionally perfect. Mm-hmm. And nine times out of ten, he is. Yeah. Um, I would like to see a little bit more uh, rebound control from him. Mm-hmm. Sometimes he gets a little bit creative uh, with yes. the <laughs> with the second. I would agree with saves. that. Um, yeah. But like I say, like he's he stops pucks, and that's mm-hmm. really that's what you want from a goalie. You know, you can talk about technique all day long. If he's stopping pucks, mm-hmm. he's doing okay. You yeah. know, and UC Cyrus, like like I said with Hellebuck, like I said with uh, Ottinger, he stops pucks. You know, he hasn't had his first year in the NHL. He had a sub nine hundred save percentage, and that's because he played one game. In mm-hmm. 2015, yeah. 2016. Uh, since then, his NHL save percentages have been 923, 925, 915, 914, 927, 918. He had a 921 in the playoffs um, a couple of seasons ago. Obviously, he didn't play in these playoffs because right. uh, of injury. injury. And I do wonder how much of that is the reason for the Preds not even being able to take a game from right. the Avalanche. Yes. I don't think they would have won the series because no. the Avalanche team was just something else. But could they have stolen a couple of games? Could they have made it interesting? Could they have made the Avalanche get a bit worried? Then, yeah, I think with UC Saros, absolutely. I think yes. he makes the team better yes. every time he's on the ice. Yeah, I would agree with that. And that was a hard pill to swallow. Now, it does help. I will tell you that I take comfort in the fact that we were swept by the eventual Stanley Cup champions. There's a little comfort in that. But I agree with you. I think if you have UC Saros in net, it becomes a little bit more interesting series, for sure. I think this team is always a better team with UC Saros in net. I think there are some teams where you can put the backup in and it might not affect the outcome of a game or the performance of a team. But I think when UC Saros is in net, this team is automatically already a better team. Yeah, I mean, you look at the the Avalanche, for example, and mm-hmm. this is not me knocking uh, Pavel Francis, who, mm-hmm. again, I'm a big fan of, not knocking Darcy Kemper. The Avalanche literally need league average goaltending to be successful. Yes, Because they're Correct. just bananas. Same yes. with um, the Lightning. 
league average they need mm-hmm. they get better than league average goaltending from Vasilevsky because he's a very good goalie. They don't need Vasilevsky. They are fine right. without him. But the Preds, and this is not a knock on the Preds skaters, but just Correct. I think a testament to how good UC Cyrus is that he makes that team better mm-hmm. every time he's on the ice. Yeah. And you don't get that with a lot of teams. You know, some teams the your goalies are basically interchangeable. Yusuf mm-hmm. Saros is, for my money, maybe one of the three most important players on that team behind Roman Yossi and maybe someone else. Maybe maybe Saros is top two. You know, yeah. I'm trying to think of of who who on the the Predators is maybe more important than Saros. Like you could make a case for Matt Duchesne, but yeah, and I know or you love Matt Duchesne personally. Like- but Don't get me my started. money, <laughs> my money is on. Yes, I Yoshi would agree with that. And Ryan Yossi carry this team. Ryan Yossi, wow, Roman Yossi. Yeah, <laughs> good, old Ryan Yossi. Yossi. good old Ryan Yossi. Good old Ryan Yossi. He's such a doll. No, I would agree with that. You know, and and we've got Philip Forsberg, we've got Matthew Shane, we have some really great players. But I would agree with you that I think the Nashville Predators, when you have Roman Yossi on the ice and you have UC Saros on the ice, they are a different team than if you take them out. Nobody can quite come in and do what they do. And, and you know, that that matters in this league. So before we go, just we're going to go league wide. Who is the one goaltender that you're most excited to watch this season across the league? Across the league? Um, I mean, I've probably got to go with my bias here. Um, I am expecting big, big things from Elvis Musleekins this yes. season. Do I think he's going to be the best goal in the league? No. But for your money he is one of the most entertaining he's got yes. such a personality he is maybe not quite as technically good as some of the other goalies but he makes saves he makes it exciting uh i would put money on him scoring a goal this season he tried really hard last <laughs> season um, it's so amazing you know, <laughs> when it happens take it from me it's so it amazing. kind of came out after the season that he obviously um with the passing of matisse kablenix mm-hmm. uh last off season last mm-hmm. season was a real struggle for him you know he Absolutely. was grieving he was dealing with trauma um you know he he was not he was not 100 percent emotionally mm-hmm. you know like maybe he yeah. was perfectly healthy physically but that's not like that's and not goalie goaltending is such a an emotional mental job anyway you know so i think he started talking about you know he didn't really feel 100 percent until he got to the end of the season so i'm expecting big things from muslikins this season um he's for better or worse, he is the starter on this team. The team has made it clear by giving he had a he got a five year extension uh, for much more money than Yunus Corpusalo, who I like Yunus Corpusalo. He doesn't have a future with this team, I don't think. Um, mm-hmm. I would look for him to be moved at the deadline. For better or worse, this is this is Elvis's team, and I think he's either Elvis is kind of a go big or go home guy, right? And I'm really really hoping, and honestly, I'm betting he goes big this season. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm super excited for that. Well, and you know, I am always, always going to deep down secretly be a fan of any Latvian players. So I, I too will always have one eye on Elvis Merzlikin. So Jay, thank you so much for coming on Locked On Predators. Before we leave, tell our listeners where they can find your podcast and you online. Uh, so you can find me at underscore Jacob Foster on Twitter. Uh, that is J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. Uh, you can find Locked On Blue Jacket over at LO underscore Blue Jacket. You can find it wherever you get Locked On Predators, uh, any podcasting app of choice. You can find us over on YouTube. Normally, I'm like, I can't recommend following the Blue Jackets in good conscience, but uh, <laughs> I don't actually, know. Now I can. You know, <laughs> follow, follow Locked On Blue Jackets. Follow the Blue Jackets this season. We're going to be fun. It is. It's going to be a great season for you all. Y'all can find me online at NK underscore Mama on Ice. You can find my work at onthefourcheck.com. And of course, you can find Locked on Predators anywhere you find your podcasts. We're on Twitter at LO underscore Predators. And check us out on YouTube. Like, subscribe, share. Let us know who you think are the top goalies in the Central Division and What's the goaltender you're watching across the league this year? That's going to do it for us today on Locked on Predators. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We will be back later this week with more hockey talk.